Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's such a, a, a pleasure and privilege to be here. Uh, John Howland, Dr. John Howland and Dr. Paul Carpentier were uh, with me and my wife uh, during the uh, 2012 campaign against Question 2. We did a number of uh, presentations throughout uh, Worcester County and some in Middlesex County. Uh, uh, they had a, a, a lawyer, a doctor, and a facilitator. Marianne was generally the facilitator, or Allison Ledoux here in Worcester. And uh, I was the lawyer, and uh, uh, Dr. Carpentier or Dr. Howland with, 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 with the physician. And uh, I, it was a long haul, and we're not taking any credit. The credit is to God. Because if you look at the uh, uh, at, at the election result, and as uh, uh, Matt was alluding to, the, the uh, polls going into the election, that's the only explanation. But we'll get into some of that. Does everyone have a good lunch? Yes. Yeah. Is everyone ready for a nap? Yeah. <laughs> well, it, today's your lucky day because I'm going to be talking about very abstruse points of law and uh, <laughs> analyzing legislation. It'll put you right to sleep. <laughs> So please take a look at the uh, at the graphic on the screen. The uh, these are uh, the pills, the, the capsules that are used in the uh, state of Oregon, the state of Washington. You have to take a hundred of them in order to uh, uh, die with dignity. Uh, and generally, they're uh, taken apart and put it in a glass of water and mixed up and you chug it down and uh, that's supposed to be a successful um, uh, end to uh, your uh, endeavor. So, the talk will be in, in three parts. The first part, a brief uh, uh, post-mortem on the referendum. Uh, the second part uh, will be a brief discussion of the uh, about question two, what that would have uh, uh, enacted had it been uh, voted on by the public. And the third is on House Bill 1998, which your efforts, thanks be to God, uh, contributed to uh, its, uh, if not defeat, it's, it's at least uh, death of this session. Um, so, there we go. Question two was defeated by a margin of 100,000 votes out of three million cast. The defeat was not due to the fact that most Massachusetts voters disagree philosophically with some form of death with dignity or assisted suicide. Question two was defeated because a very diverse coalition came together and worked very hard to defeat a specific law, not to defeat a principle of philosophy. So, just to give you some statistics on the uh, what we faced going into this uh, uh, election in November of 2012. Polls prior to the election, uh, in October, uh, a poll that was taken October 2nd to 8th, yes, 65%, no, 19%. Poll in September, yes, 68%. Uh, another uh, September poll, uh, uh, Suffolk University Channel 7, yes, 64%, no, 27%. An August poll, yes, 58%, no, 24%. And depending on how you read these, we were even losing ground uh, going into the election. The <coughs> The coalition was, as I say, extraordinarily diverse. Uh, the committee headed by Roseanne Bacon <coughs> Mead, uh, the disabilities rights group, Second Thoughts, very, very important. Uh, they were uh, just a tremendous force in uh, putting forth the uh, culture of life philosophy. Uh, the Massachusetts Medical Society, African American clergy such as Reverend Liz Walker, uh, distinguished citizens who don't necessarily agree with us on 
other life issues, like Victoria Reggie Kennedy, uh, was Zeke Emanuel, uh, Rahm Emanuel's brother, uh, very distinguished bioethicist, all opposed to physician-assisted suicide. Uh, Rasky Berlein did a great job. Uh, John Martilla, the uh, uh, great, the, the very distinguished Democratic uh, pollster, uh, I, I had a dinner with him after the uh, election. Doesn't agree with us on any, much other, much anything else. Very firm against any form of physician-assisted suicide. Fifty-one percent of the voters were convinced that Question Two was bad law, even though many of these people agreed with the in concept with death with dignity. Largely overlooked in the, by the analysts uh, was the minority vote. In the African-American precincts of Boston, uh, question two was voted down by between two-thirds and three-quarters in just about every precinct. By the way, that same percentage was was the difference with medical marijuana, only it was the opposite. Um, but, uh, you know, and there, there are very uh, uh, distinct reasons that I think uh, physician-assisted suicide, death of dignity, whatever, would uh, uh, resonate with uh, the African-American community. Uh, and across the state, the African-American vote may well have provided the crucial difference in the defeat of question two. Now, it's important to remember a campaign is not the time to convince people philosophically of why they're wrong and you're right and what the underlying uh, uh, reasons are for your position. Uh, campaign is the time to get votes. And really, I don't care why, during a campaign, why somebody votes for my position. I just want to win. Uh, now, there is a time for <clears throat> trying to change the hearts and minds of people on a philosophical level, and uh, that time is now, before there's an election, in your churches, in the marketplace, uh, at your places of work, in your neighborhoods. Uh, very, very important, because the culture is increasingly becoming, uh, as you know, secular. Uh, the culture is uh, becoming very, uh, uh, for want of a better term, pro-death. So, as I said, before I get into uh, House Bill 1998, I, I just would like to very briefly uh, discuss what the, the, the framework of what the ballot question tried to do, which is in many ways uh, uh, replicated in House Bill 1998. Uh, a patient who has fewer than six months to live, uh, according to uh, a physician, uh, who's a resident of Massachusetts, makes an oral request to the doctor under the ballot question. Uh, the prescription cannot be given uh, sooner than 15 days after the oral request and sooner than two days after a written request. The written request must be uh, witnessed by two people, one of whom can't be uh, an heir, one of whom can't be uh, uh, a relative. Uh, there has to be a consultation with the physician, the, the treating physician, uh, and a consultation with a uh, consulting physician before the uh, prescription can be given. That's the basic framework. Now, House Bill 1998 is slightly different. Again, any adult resident of Massachusetts suffering from a condition which is presumed to cause death within six months may request from his or her attending physician medication which would end the patient's life in a humane and dignified manner. And like the ballot question, House Bill 1998 repeats as a mantra every time ending life is mentioned, it's always followed by the words in a humane and dignified manner. So that if this passes uh, under the laws of the Commonwealth, uh, a person who's administered these drugs dies in a humane and dignified manner. 
and don't say no. Like the ballot question, the bill mandates that the patient be an adult, which is defined as 18 years of age or older, a resident of Massachusetts suffering from a terminal disease or condition which can reasonably be expected to cause death within six months, and again, requires a, a written request signed by two persons. Like the ballot question, the act states that one of the witnesses may not be someone entitled to a share of the person's estate at the time the request is made, which means, of course, is that uh, one of the witnesses can be entitled to a share of the estate. Uh, and it, when, when I, uh, I did my talk on, uh, on the ballot question uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I had the uh, uh, illustrated it with a story about Uncle Charlie and his uh, uh, sleazy nephew Felix, and Felix's girlfriend Francesca, and uh, <laughs> Felix and Francesca could both uh, be witnesses because uh, Francesca wasn't uh, an heir at law and wasn't uh, uh, a relative by uh, uh, blood marriage or adoption. Uh, like the ballot question, the bill requires that the attending physician must inform the patient of the medical diagnosis, the prognosis the potential risks of taking the medication, uh, and I suppose one would be you might live, but <laughs> the probable result of taking the medication, and feasible alternatives, including hospice care, comfort care, and pain control. Also, like the ballot question, some other parts of the bill remain. For example, the definition of self-administer, again, states that this is the quote unquote, act of ingesting. But act of ingesting is not defined. So someone can administer orally the uh, medication to the patient, uh, and it need not be the patient that takes the, uh, 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 the, the prescribed uh, dose uh, him or herself. The de definition of capable remains the same, namely having the capacity to make health care decisions and to communicate them to health care providers, including communication through persons familiar with the patient's manner of communicating if those persons are available. Yeah, a grandma grunted once, that means she wants it. I mean, this is kind of dangerous ground we're treading on. Incompetent patients will most likely be able to be subject to physician-assisted suicide. Now remember, the law says you have to, uh, uh, the patient has to uh, sign a written document in order to get the, uh, the prescription. However, uh, in Massachusetts, incompetent patients have the same rights as competent patients, and that was uh, enshrined into law in the uh, uh, case of uh, Patricia Brophy versus New England Sinai Hospital. Anyone remember that case? Uh, a firefighter in Easton, Massachusetts, and uh, thank you, firefighter in Easton, Massachusetts, had a brain aneurysm. He uh, went into a persistent vegetative state. Uh, his uh, he had a gastrostomy tube uh, inserted into his side for feeding, and his wife, who was also his guardian, uh, asked that it be removed. Now, he wasn't, a, he wasn't in danger of dying. He was in danger, you know, he, was, he would live indefinitely with, uh, as long as he was fed through the gastrostomy tube. The Supreme Judicial Court held, well, if, uh, uh, if, if Mr. Brophy were uh, competent, he could, he has the right to have this withdrawn, and uh, because he's incompetent, he should not be denied that right. Um, so the, the uh, feeding tube was withdrawn. Uh, food and water, nutrition and hydration were deemed to be medical treatment and not given in the, in the ordinary course. Uh, so this was a, a, a bad decision on a number of levels. Judge Nolan, uh, Justice Joe, Joe Nolan, was uh, on the Supreme Judicial Court at the time, 
uh, gave a classic uh, uh, dissent and uh, very uh, hard hitting, railed against the uh, uh, secular humanism, in parentheses, modern paganism, uh, enshrined in the decision and ended, it, uh, ended his dissent with the words pro dolor, for shame. Um, however, uh, even requiring written informed consent does not prohibit an incompetent patient from <coughs> availing him or herself from uh, one of these rights. Matter of Mary Moe, a 1982 case, in spite of a law requiring written informed consent for persons to be sterilized, the Supreme Judicial Court allowed a guardian to petition the probate court to authorize sterilization of her incompetent ward. Tragic case, uh, a young woman uh, had been uh, institutionalized for many years, she was 26, uh, suffered what the decision says was a sexual incident, and her mother, who was her guardian, asked that, the, uh, uh, that her daughter be sterilized. Uh, Sterilization could only be done if, uh, under the law, which is still uh, on the books, uh, only if the patient uh, herself uh, uh, signed in writing a request that, uh, that the uh, sterilization be performed. The court said, no, you don't need that because uh, incompetent patients are uh, uh, able to avail themselves of this in spite of uh, in spite of the uh, requirement of a writing. Okay, there, there are some important differences between the bill and the ballot question, and the differences go against us except for one minor one. Uh, the preamble to the bill states, uh, the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts affirms the existing right of capable terminally ill patients to request compassionate aid in dying and obtain medication from a physician meeting medical best practices that the patient can choose to self-administer uh, to bring about a humane and dignified death. The, the, the lack of a two before bring is in the original. Uh, bring about a humane and dignified death. So uh, th this law is, is recognizing a right that in fact does not exist. And it, and it would seem to enshrine this right. Uh, Obtaining the drugs to kill oneself would now be pre -existing, a pre-existing right. Uh, the ballot question defines a procedure. The bill defines a right which the procedure will help you to uh, exercise. But the right only adheres if the patient is capable and terminally ill. Under the bill, under case law, much different. <clears throat> the ballot question had at least some protections. The prescription could not be written sooner than 15 days after a written request and 48 hours after an oral request. The bill eliminates the waiting period and the oral request. Uh, you can come in, it's, it's basically, uh, it could be a same day, um, uh, a same day procedure. The ballot question required a consulting physician to examine the patient and his or her relevant medical records and confirm in writing the attending physician's diagnosis that the patient is suffering from a terminal disease and would verify that the patient is capable, is acting voluntarily, and has made an informed decision. So at least the consulting physician would be a check and a balance against the uh, attending physician. Uh, Uh, like the ballot question under the bill, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, like the ballot question under the bill, a consulting physician must examine the patient and his or her medical records, confirm in writing the attending physician's diagnosis that the patient is suffering from a terminal condition, and verify the patient is capable, of acting voluntarily, and has made an informed decision. Well, that's all well and good, but. The bill allows the attending physician to waive the requirement of the uh, consulting physician. Two reasons are given. Uh, if the examination would result in undue hardship to the patient because ter the terminal condition is sufficiently advanced that confirmation of the illness is not necessary, or 
An appointment with a consulting physician can't be made within a reasonable amount of time or with the physician is within a reasonable distance of the patient's residence. Uh, so who determines reasonableness? The attending physician. Now, if confirmation of the terminal condition may be used to waive the need for a consulting physician, uh, what happens to uh, an analysis of whether the patient is capable, acting, involuntar acting voluntarily, and has made an informed decision? It goes out the window. There is no check and balance. As Patrick Henry said, I smell a rat. <laughs> Like the ballot question, the bill specifically does not require the patient's family to be notified that the patient has requested the fatal medication, section 10. The bill says that they encourage the family to be notified, but there's nothing that requires the family, if one is available, to be notified. <coughs> like the ballot question, the bill does not require the patient to be referred for psychological or psychiatric counseling, except if the attending physician believes the patient to be suffering from a disorder or depression causing impaired judgment. So uh, the patient could be uh, suffering from depression, but in the eyes of the attending physician, it doesn't cause impaired judgment, then a uh, referral to uh, a mental health professional will not be made. Like the ballot question, the bill requires the falsification of the death certificate. Uh, the death certificate uh, is to be, uh, maybe, um, uh, filled out by the attending physician, but the death certificate shall list the underlying disease as the cause of death, not the uh, poison that's been uh, uh, prescribed. Uh, like the ballot question, the bill has a bare requirement that unused medication shall be disposed of by lawful means with no safeguard in place. Well, what's lawful means for disposition? Um, in the case of, uh, of Oregon and Washington, there are many people who uh, have requested the medication but who have not taken the medication. Uh, and, and some die without having taken the medication. So uh, there are stockpiles of uh, this, uh, the, the, I think it's the phenobarbital, in patients' medical cabinets. Now, if you're a city like Boston, one of the first places they break in person goes is the medicine cabinet. So a lot of this stuff is, is just uncontrolled and uncontrollable. Uh, unlike the ballot question, conscience protections for institutions such as religious health care facilities are weakened. The ballot question allowed a uh, health care facility, a, uh, a hospital, nursing home, what have you, to uh, uh, prohibit uh, uh, administration of uh, the prescription or the drugs on their premises. Uh, the bill contains no such protection for institutions uh, regarding doctors who prescribe aid and dying. The bill further requires healthcare facilities which recuse themselves uh, to create a consumer disclosure which will identify the services which, in which they refuse to participate Clarify differences between institution-wide objections and those that may be raised by individual licensed providers who are employed by or contract with the provider. So every hospital has to uh, 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 give a uh, uh, spreadsheet, flowchart, what have you, of uh, where the, the institution differs from the uh, individual practitioner. Uh, describe the mechanism the provider will use to provide patients a referral to another provider or provider in the provider service. This is in the bill. I didn't make up all these providers uh, who are willing to perform the specific health care service. And describe the provider's policies and procedures relating to transferring patients to other providers who will uh, uh, implement the health care decision. Uh, the cost, uh, inform the consumers, the cost of the transfer will be borne by the transferring provider and describe the internal and external consumer complaint processes available to persons affected by the provider's objections. A lot of uh, a burden placed on uh, healthcare institutions which uh, dissent from uh, uh, the requirements of this, uh, of this bill. Finally, uh, Section 14.5 says 
says, state regulations, documents, and reports shall not refer to the practice of aid in dying under this chapter as suicide or assisted suicide. Well, why is this man smiling? Uh, that, that's George Orwell. So, uh, anyway, I'd be happy to uh, uh, take any questions uh, uh, you, you may have. Uh, Linda. Well, you know, that's a good question. It does say state regulations and documents and reports. So it's really directing state authorities. So, Steve. Hi, Henry. Um, there's still no oversight after the medication is prescribed. In other words, no uh, medical person has to be there when it's administered. Or so that's a great question, and that's the truth. There, there's nobody who has to be present when the person is uh, taking the medication. And in fact, uh, there's no record kept of anyone who is present. So uh, when the person takes the medication, you don't know who's with them, uh, if anyone. And uh, what uh, you certainly don't know, what, what pressure can be put on someone to, uh, uh, to, 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 to take the stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, to me, that's one of the biggest issues. And, um, I was standing outside a poll on the last time, and somebody came up to me and said, you know, you know we, we have this sign that said, this is bad law, which it was. Um, so if, it was if it didn't have all these problems, would you be in favor of this bill? I said, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm opposed in, in you know, you know, philosophically, basically. Um, but um, I, so I, I would not be, but I got the feeling that she may have voted against it, but that if there were all kinds of safeguards, she probably philosophically was not opposed. And this is my fear that that's why I'm glad you're uh, telling people to, to try to change people's hearts and minds because if they, it seemed like they didn't, but if they took care of all these problems, that the thing would pass because a lot of people are philosophically inclined to go along with it. So we need to change no, the hearts and minds. Absolutely. And, and the other side is always trying to change the focus of the specifics of the bill that's going to become law to the broader philosophical question. For example, when uh, Rosie Bacon was, when Bacon Mead was on the Dan Ray show, uh, she was doing a very good job, but Dan kept interrupting her, saying, uh, okay, I understand you're against the bill, but if these, uh, if the the objections you have are, uh, if the objections you have are addressed in the legislation, would you still be opposed? And she said, well, yes, of course. He says, okay, we got that. Now we'll go on to the next caller. Yeah. So it, it, just a masterful job of deflecting uh, the the, uh, the the conversation. Right. So so my my I guess my. To summarize, I would think they were smart enough to know that there were all these problems that people had, that, uh, even with people who were not um, philosophically opposed to it. Why didn't they address them? I mean, I, I thank God they didn't, but why didn't they address them and make it smooth up all this? Um, I, I, well, that's a good question. I, this bill was modeled very closely on the two in, in Oregon and, and Washington State. Right. Uh, and it's about almost word for word. Uh, the um, Compassion and, and Choices, uh, the old Hemlock Society, uh, it doesn't want those safeguards in. And, and I think that's where this is coming from. Uh, the, uh, and I, I think they'll be uh, brazen and just count on society changing. Um, some of the uh, problems with it just can't be addressed in Massachusetts, like uh, the uh, uh, need to uh, extend the uh, right, quote unquote, to uh, the, the, the uh, uh, incompetent patients. Um, that, that's that's basically constitutional law here. Uh, so that that uh, that'll be a permanent problem with any bill uh, that they suggest along these lines. Yes, please. Um, I just want to wonder if the attending Not have to be with the patient when they're taking the meds, then how can that be done or death with dignity? How can it be a dignified way of going when there's nobody around that can see the patient die? Uh, that's, 
Well said. Thank you. Yeah, uh, please, member. Yes. Yes. Yeah, doesn't taking a doctor taking part in this at all um, isn't that a violation of their the Hippocratic oath? Yeah. Isn't that just off? But obviously, you know, you know, doctor actually participating in this, and maybe that's why they anticipate so few doing it. Well, uh, you know, I think that's uh, th that's part of the uh, Mass Medical Society's opposition. You're implicating the medical profession now uh, into uh, from being uh, uh, healers to uh, being uh, uh, complicit in, 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 in death. Yeah, all the way around yeah. here. Yeah, and yes, thank you. Uh, please. Yes, I went to a seminar given by Mass General Hospital, and this was uh, the day of the, uh, the election last uh, November. And the physician was talking to Rock House Legal and R&R in Washington, and one of the problems that really struck me is that patients can be at home alone or with other people, and they have to ingest 100 pills, and they may vomit in the process. The medication can cause nausea, and they can vomit. They can actually just vomit. So it's a botched physician-assisted suicide. So, um, so I'm just bringing that up as one of the horrors that can happen. No, it, that, that's a great point, and some people will, will die from asphyxiation of the body. They'll aspirate the body. They'll aspirate the body. That's correct. Friend, please. Um, this last go-round with this state initiative, and I'm going to tend to think so. I think it's 2018 is the earliest uh, they can go back to the people. So I, I expect it to be on the ballot in 2018 if it's not, if, if it is stopped at the legislature. Yes? Uh, when I went to uh, talk on this uh, and they were all kind of forward, I would always raise the question, why do you need a law to commit suicide? And it just threw them off. They couldn't answer that. Right, this, this exists already. It's, I mean, you can commit suicide. Why do you need uh, physicians to okay? No, they, 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 they want the uh, medical establishment behind it. Right. And, uh, yes, please. Can a pharmacist refuse to fill the prescription? As I read the law, yes, because they are. The definition of healthcare provider is broad enough to include pharmacists at the conscience provisions uh, within the Constitution. John. Henry, the supporters of bills like this go back as far as Margaret Sanger, uh, Joseph Mengele, and all Hitler. How do we get that information out to the people without coming off like a bunch of uh, fanatics? Because we know it's, it, it's these people that are supporting this bill. You know, the, the old Hemlock Society, they printed up their names so they wouldn't be associated. How do we get that out there without making ourselves feel foolish? Well, you know, I, that's a great question. And I, I would only suggest that we at least go back to Derek Humphrey, who people know, and who uh, is uh, really the current uh, 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 for want of a better term, mad dog of the uh, uh, of the, uh, the euthanasia movement, or at least was uh, a few years ago, uh, and he he put it on the map in this country. Uh, but rather than focus on the personalities, I think if we focus on the uh, the impact and what it is they're trying to do, I don't know. Maybe. Well, I'm, I'll withdraw that. Uh, but I, I think focusing on the impact rather than the uh, the, the uh, genesis is more effective. But leave that to your discretion, sir. Regarding the question about the pharmacist, I thought one of your slides says that if a uh, facility or, or or a medical professional does not want to or has conscientious objection, they still have to provide uh, a list of where the services can be obtained. 
Yes, I think that was the uh, facility, healthcare facility rather than healthcare provider. Um, but um, I, I don't believe a pharmacist himself or herself would have to uh, make such a uh, make such a provision. Uh, I, I believe it would be more the uh, hospital, nursing home, uh, what, uh, what have you. Yes, sir. What is your opinion about the, the uh, primary motivation behind this movement? You know, I've wondered about it myself. Is it is it is it the need to is it a anti religion, anti God, a need for control, a cost cutting measure? It's you know, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm certainly I don't think qualified to answer the question, uh, but. I, what I'd like to do is just uh, have everyone keep in mind, rather than the, the, the leadership, a lot of the folks who are for this are really motivated by, uh, uh, by a sense of, of the good, that they truly want to re relieve suffering, and they truly believe that um, death is preferable to life. There's uh, certainly an element of control that they believe they should be able to control uh, their own uh, uh, debt. I think when, uh, as you know, society is largely divorced from uh, uh, Christianity and largely divorced from the idea that we're stewards of our lives and that we uh, uh, owe them to, uh, to God and to uh, other people. Um, the, uh, Leadership uh, is is very, um, you know, I, I'm not sure there's uh, the sense of altruism on the leadership. Yeah. Henry, there is something very positive about education, which I think we have to remember. Um, when we were polling, we found that if the thing was called death with dignity, 75% of the people were in favor. The same people later in the poll, if the word um, physician-assisted suicide was used, it went down to 65. And if doctor prescribed suicide, it went down to 55. So that was the same person in a short period of time with different wording. And I think that's very positive. What that says is that these people aren't lost. They're just not educated well enough. And it really is up to us to keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. I, I think the phrase death with dignity has lost a lot of its luster uh, because uh, they, they, no, notice the, the other side didn't use it in, in, titling, in titling their bill. So uh, they, they talked about care in whatever. Dying time is very good. Well, I, I, I want to thank everybody for their, for their patience and, uh, and uh, hospitality and forbearance.